Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Proper Varian, this is Crusader Kings 2, and this is the Substitute series, because Elder Kings broke, sadly, you know, I can't actually restart the game, I can't, I can't do anything in Elder Kings, because it just crashes for me, and I don't actually know why, because neither the games nor the mods files have been changed in any way, I verified integrity, I re-downloaded everything, I don't know what is happening, but what I can tell you is that we are going to play something else, and this one was decided democratically on the channel's community poll, and it is the Crimean Goths, you have been asking for it for literal months, and now here we are finally going to do it and I am tempted, although not quite convinced, we're gonna see how it goes, I'm tempted to do this in an achievement run. And the achievement run is the one for, you know, 769 to 1444, whenever the game ends, I don't even remember, honestly, probably 1492 or something. Either way, I think that is exact, uh, exactly what we're going to do here, because as the Crimean Goths, there is a lot of downtime, but there are sometimes things that happen, and of course those I'm going to show you, but most of the time I think we are going to have huge time spans in just one episode. Now, Crimean Goths, what even is that? Let's take a look at it. The Goths of Crimea are a very curious case for a population living in the same area, never really, you know, doing much, compared as, at least to the other Goths that went around and, you know, conquered Iberia and whatnot. Uh, they just sat here, they had a good time, and they existed through centuries. You can see in 769 they're on the map, and in 1337 they are also indeed on the map. Now, we're going to start playing them in 769. We're going to try, you know, to create a kingdom here, but I will tell you, we're probably going to cut out quite a bit. Uh, we're going to see how it actually goes. I honestly... I'm, I'm so tired uh, when it comes to uh, thinking of surviving from 769 to 14, whatever it is. I don't even remember what the actual requirement is, what the end of the game is, because I've never played to it. And today I fear we are going to start doing that. We are going to continue, or we're going to start out as, uh, as Stratego Sebastos of Cheson, and we're going to be the Duke uh, with the, you know, Chief Bosporius underneath us here. Bosporius, of course, also being Gothic. And we're going to do our best to survive, not just against Kazaria, but also as a vassal of the Byzantine Empire for about 700 years. My god, what are we going to do here now? Now, since this is a very long-term campaign, and, you know, I want to play this long-term so that I can actually get the achievement done here, we set the Mongols and the Aztecs to the late starts, and we also put the Turkic invaders to... Nope, not random, put them to historical, thank you very much. So that we're gonna see some action stagger throughout the years. And with that, let's start, oh my god. I don't know if I'm prepared mentally. Iron Man, Cherson. You know what? Crimean Goths. Oh boy, and here we go. Now, starting position is quite alright. You know, we are a duke, of course. This is a theme, meaning it will, on death, fall, away, uh, fall back to the emperor, and we can only hope that he will give us the title yet again. But even if he doesn't, we are in a fairly decent position, and I want to go ahead and strengthen our grip over chess on our grip over Crimea. We're going to do this by getting rid of the count underneath us, at least if we can. Look at this, we are a content man, we are a chaste man, a gregarious man, and a paranoid man. So there's an underhanded rogue, and I'm going to go ahead and gather some money, because I think survival here on Crimea is definitely dependent on how much money we have now. With that being said, I would like to acquire a title, and I should be able to do that fairly soon with Theodosia, hopefully soon under our control. I'm also going to give you some money. Thank you very much. And then we're going to go ahead, and I think we're going to take a loan here, because I want to have a rapid start so that I can then have a fairly peaceful continuation, you know, once everything is said and done. Man, we have so few troops. So I want a fairly quick uh, start here, because the Goths are going to have a lot of downtime again, as I already mentioned. Ooh, this is a good character. Agika may have a couple more ambitions than we do, although he will be trained as a steward, of course. How's my daughter? Oh, I don't have a daughter. Uh, see, when I spawned in earlier, uh, when I ch uh, checked this out, then I had a daughter, but here we go. Revoke the chieftain, give it to me, thank you. Then war it is, you know how it goes. What was that? Somebody just walked into me, but don't do this, I swear to God. Don't siege me down. Alright, the war's over. The game, of course, runs absolutely beautifully fast, at least for the start here. It's going to be, uh, become uh, painful later on, but, you know, that is a uh, topic, I think, for a later date. Let's take this. Oh, we're actually gonna win. Get absolutely screwed over. We destroyed these Crimean pa uh, Khazarians. I love it. I want to take you out as well so that you can't do anything against me. I'm not going to go to war with him yet. I'm quite afraid, actually, of these horsemen. But with that being said, oh, I don't even need to do this. There you go. Theodosia is ours. We are now the lord of this and that. And we're in a pretty decent position to just, you know, hang out and make some money. I think that is a, a valuable idea here. My liege, would you like to give me a title? Oh! What? Wait, what? The county of Thrake? Oh. Holy crap, thank you. Excellent! That is actually amazing! Thank you so much, my friend. He just gave me the county of Thrake. 
Wow. Basileus Constantinos V, you have my support. Forever. Yep, and there you go. I can't stop them from looting. I just don't have the troops. I don't have the money to actually do it. I can only hope that they can't siege this down, and they totally could. Oh, no. Come on. We're just gonna get sieged over and over again. Yeah, I can already see it. Oh, they're fighting. God bless them. Thank you so much for that. And look at that. The Khazars are actually in revolt. Let's hope that that lasts. I definitely don't want to deal with them. The rise of the Shia. The schism of the art of Islam dates back to its earliest days. The majority of Sunnis have long persecuted the followers of Ali, the Shias, forcing them into hiding. This is a very strong rebellion because this rebellion will go for all of Andalusia, meaning that we will have a very central, very strong Shia empire right there. Yeah, he is 6.74k. He should be winning this, but whether he will be, of course, is always something a bit different. The fools fight amongst themselves. Ergica, welcome. He is a fortune builder, though. You know what? He's a decent character. I like him. And we will definitely not marry any of these absolute heathens these these barbarians to the north if we can get if we can secure at least a decent marriage here i would be very happy Carantanian, the strongest alliance it would actually be the strongest alliance because the Carantanian people the slovenians and of course the goths are the strongest people and unifying their strengths you know what that makes a lot of sense connecting these strongest people that have ever existed will change things for the better i'm certain Ooh. Your Sakalarius comes to see you one afternoon. He explains that he has devised a plan to bring in exotic goods. Uh, your Sakalarius comes to see you one afternoon. He explains that he has devised a plan to bring in exotic goods by setting up a trade route of the foreign realm. This would, of course, require a sizable monetary investment, but the potential profits would also be great. You know what? Absolutely. The time has come to purchase pack animals for our planned merchant expedition. Strong and sturdy beasts are available at the market, but they come at quite a hefty price. Purchase them. Sure. The word has spread that you are planning a trading expedition, and a group of priests have arrived at your court with a request. They are offering temple funds of the, uh, for the journey if you will allow them to come along on the journey. You know what? I don't like the church, but my liege does, so I'm gonna, just going to say sure. Let's bring in the iconoclast pri uh, priests. Of course, it will be an honor to have you with us. I have been informed of your ambitions to establish a new trade operation near my lands. I do hope that you uh, intend to compensate me for this incursion into the Republic of Venice. Venice? Already, I see, uh, being hostile towards the Byzantine Empire. Nope, that is none of your business. It is time to set out uh, on the trading expedition. Hopefully, it will yield good profits to foreign lands. Let's do it. Oh my god, I hate Kazaria. What is this war? Why would you start... Oh, why would you start a war against the Kazarians? Please. The expedition has finally reached the realm of High Chief Aimo. Your steward asks you what gift we shall bring forth, such as a token... Uh, fourth as a token of friendship to High Chief Aimo. How is this inside of, like, a trade route inside of the area of Venice? Come on, Venice, get out of here. I shall gift you a dozen strong horses. Actually, a chest with quality cloth. Yeah, sure. Do the cloth. At dinner, you notice High Chief Aimo webs his face growing red with annoyance as he glares at your steward shoveling his food in with his bare hands. How come that you are so unmisbehaving? Please excuse him, I'm still trying to teach this barbarian proper menace, but they are the barbarians, though. Well, I guess, uh, I'm hungry too? You're walking idly around the co uh, court of High Chief Aimo and you suddenly hear a discussion increasing in intensity around the corner. Turning the corner, you're surprised to see one of the priests from your expedition engaged in a wild theological debate with a local noble. This could endanger the whole venture. Hmm, you know what? I will soothe everyone. Sure. I'm not very religious, but I'm not anti-religion, of course. After long hours nego uh, negotiating and discussing possible terms of trade, you and I, Chief Aimo Vep, seem to have arrived at a mutual understanding. Beautiful. With a new trade route set up, you return with the first batch of goods and sell them off for a nice profit. The influx of new wares will also benefit the economy for a long period to come. Look at that, for 30 years we will now have a trade route here giving us more tax and everything. Also, of course, prosperity. We become a trader, giving us stewardship, business contacts and all the money and prestige. This was amazing. Very good start. Sakalaris has brought in riches to your realm and uh, realm through his competent handling of the trading expedition. And he probably expects to be rewarded with a share of the wealth. You know what? Sure. And there it is, the strongest marriage ever made, Zenislava Pleda uh, Pleraric. Holy crap, she's a saint. Well, you know, obviously not, but my god, look at her. Zenislava Pleraric um, will marry Ergica. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. Can I convert you? Honestly, I'm going to leave you your faith. You know, the, the emperor is leaving me my culture. I'm not too religious. Zenislava may keep her Catholic faith. Our churches are not that different. Oh my god, matters of life and death. Nope, you know what? You're just gonna... I'll, I'll listen. I'm gonna just say no. When I think about it, I've lived a good life. Look at this, I'm content. Don't even... Don't even at me. 
keep building this up, shall we? I would really like to actually just like get more people here. You've been spending countless hours sketching up plans for different buildings projects when you suddenly realize how you could display your extraordinary ex uh, architectural skills. You will build a grand tower that will dwarf everything else in the landscape. You know what? This will be glorious, absolutely. A tower construction will need a mason to work the stone for both beauty and strength. The question is whom you should hire for this delicate work. I know a craftsman that has the skill. Well, that's gonna be expensive. I don't think I can pay for any of this. All of the realm word, uh, word is spread of your prestigious building project. While some might be skeptical, most of your vassals are openly impressed with the scale of the planned tower. The doubters will be proven wrong. Will they? Will they, though? Alexandros comes up to you and complains about what hard and tiresome work it is to plan out how to carve the stones for the tower. He therefore asks you for more payment to finish the plan since he has already used up the first payment. Strangely enough, according to rumors, he seems to have had a lot of time to spare chasing after women in your court. Alexandros, you just made me bankrupt and I think you're just spending it on women? Oh no. Well... Before the construction of a building this large can begin, we need to make sure we have enough high-quality stone. Your steward su uh, suggests importing the stone from a reliable trade partner, when it could be beneficial to the region to have access to a nearby quarry. Oh boy, let's just import it. During the construction of your grand tower and uh, castle, a couple of the workers were killed by a falling granite, uh, granite block as the ropes holding it snapped. During the construction of your grand tower and castle, a couple of the workers were killed by a falling granite block as their ropes holding it snapped. People are now demanding stricter security measures, as well as compensation for the families that lost their husbands and fathers in this tragic incident. Mm, you know what? Peasants are expendable. Bishop Alagaisus of Cariopolis approaches you at court, clearly upset. He's seen that the new tower now stretches higher than any temple in the realm. He raises his voice and nearly screams, This is unacceptable! You cannot climb into heaven no matter how much you try. The way to heaven is the domain of the church! You know what? Why don't you go back to your old scriptures, you nerd? I am not that religious. Don't worry about it. I cannot pay to afford to pay the magistrates, well. The great tower that you began planning so long ago has finally been finished. A tower this tall can be seen from a long way away, and people are equally amazed and frightened by the power you have displayed by accomplishing such a grand feat of construction. During the years of work, you have spent your time perfecting your knowledge of the many key aspects of the science of construction, knowledge that will last centuries. The tower is also sure to hold back many thousands of enemy soldiers. Look at that. 100 prestige. Um, gets great tower. Okay, yeah, that's pretty decent. I'm an architect now. Beautiful. This character loves buildings, architecture, and ma machinery, particularly anything related to siege warfare. That is gorgeous. That is really good. You know what? Absolutely. I'm an architect now. I, I wish I had a nickname like The Architect. My, con lifestyle costs uh, my content lifestyle costs a bit, but I don't mind paying for it. I have my eyes set on a title, but my spy master Hectorius has advised me to forget about the title, saying I would invoke too much wrath if I tried to claim it. My wife Philippa, however, is doing everything but telling me outright that I should pursue the title. Hmm... I may become ambitious here, and that would turn everything around, but you know, maybe after building this title, and of course she is my lover, we are very good uh, towards each other. Yeah, this, uh, you know what, I think I'm gonna listen to you. I think I am going to listen to you. If we pick up ambitious here, then that may change everything. There you go, we are all of a sudden ambitious. Everything about us has changed, it feels. And oh my god, Abkhazia actually did it. They actually took... Eastern Crimea. This is very, very lucky for us because this means that we only have this location now actually bordering us from Kazaria, held uh, by Khan Bastu of Yabgumak. We are so much safer. Thanks to only one clan now bordering us. Abkhazia, you are living gods. I cannot believe that they've actually done it. And typical Byzantine Empire politics. Vasilios Nikitas of the Byzantine Empire has folded to the demands of the faction for Antimos Isauros as ruler of the Byzantine Empire. And he is merely 14 years old. Oh my god. Well, you know, I was very happy about them only being one clan, but look at them actually destroying us. They destroyed the war camp! Oh, thank you, Emperor. You know what, Vasilios and Timos? I will be thankful to you forever. They did capture the thing, uh, but, you know, what can you do? Nobody of us got captured. And hopefully, uh, they won't be able to raid us for the next five years, so we should be fine. At least, I hope we will be. See, I'm not a good commander, and usually I would uh, say no to this, but Vasileos uh, Antimos actually saved us when it comes to, you know, the step nomads here, so I shall accept. I will serve in your armies, although, of course, it may mean my death, because I'm pretty bad at it. Just for the record here, yeah, I hope everybody's aware of this. And look at that, now that we are commander, we can also actually vote. Vasileos himself is voting for Prince Nikitas, so you know what? I shall vote for Prince Nikitas too. Oh no, I knew it. 
You two-faced jester, the Greek soldier yells as he charges at me, his expression more than of a, uh, that of a wild animal than man. For a moment, time stands still as I am watching the movement of a shiny sword coming straight for my leg. Curses! I am one-legged. My god. Yesterday, lesions appeared on your face and swiftly spread across your body. Now they have turned to blisters filled with pus. You have contracted smallpox. Oh, no. That is horrible. A cold physician, Bishop Radagaisos of Cariopolis, has come to see you and offers treatment for your illness. He explains that there are several different types of treatment he can offer. I am a brave man and I must survive. Come on, Radagaisos, let's try something new. Oh boy. Bishop Radagaisos made you drink a draught of poppy before strapping you down on his operating table. You almost dozed off while he prepared his instruments, but when he raised a, scal uh, a scalpel towards your eye, you felt wide awake. I'm sorry, my lord, but we must remove the root of the problem. You will be cured of your disease, but we no longer have an eye. Damn. We have no- oh, I'm- there you go. No eye, no leg, and we are dead. And thus ends the life of Duke- uh, Duke Sebastos. And now we are Count Ergica, because of course the duchy fell to the Emperor. I hope that he sees it in himself to give it back to us, otherwise I will merely be a Count, which would be very disappointing, but... You know, what can you do about it? Now, who is Count Ergica? Count Ergica is a fortune builder, he is gregarious, greedy, lustful, wrath, and temperate, so he is a fairly, you know, a... Uh, Let's call it sinful, man. His wife, on the other hand, is absolutely amazing in every single trait that she has. And I think we're going to go ahead, gain a title here, yeah, so this will definitely work out. I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to be a ruler. Because, you know, that is exactly what he would focus on. He's finally a ruler. Finally, his father is gone and he can rule in his stead. I don't think he had much of a... Uh, much love for his father, you know? There you go. Gain a title has gone through. Very nice. Acquire a title. Give me the duchy. Thank you. Immediately, both of these went through, acquire a title and gain a title. I love that. Um, I would like to build a war chest, I think. My lord, Philippa steps out of the shadows beside me with a sharp smile. Would you do me the honor of bestowing a nickname upon me, my lord? I don't even know you. Oh, why are you my mum? Right, mother. You do deserve a good name. The fairest of castle. That's a bit creepy, isn't it? The handsome? The burden? <sighs> I guess. Ah, that's a bit creepy. Yes, mother, you are the most attractive lady that I know. I think that Strategos Ergica essentially wants to be a part of the high society. You know, he is a gothic, of course, but he wants to be integrated in the Byzantine Empire's politics. And because of it, I will educate her in etiquette. My children shall know what it means to be well-educated and to come from a royal court. My father-in-law has passed away. Damn, I have thought it over and I cannot be the father of my wife Zenislava's baby. As it grows in her belly, I have trouble sleeping. I must put this matter to rest. We're not paranoid. That's pretty bad news. I'll hire, I'll hire someone to find out. Oh. How dare you. Would he expose it? He's lustful himself. He's greedy. He is wrathful. You know what? He would expose it. This is high treason. The Zenislava. She has fled. Damn. We didn't even manage to imprison her. What a disappointment. Can I request, uh, request a divorce here? Seriously, she cheated on me! My god. The fruit of Zenislava's shameful infidelity has finally been born. I still cannot believe she would betray me so brazenly. Can I imprison you as well? Also fled successfully, huh? My god, everybody fled successfully all the time. You all are cowards. Why can't I? Come on, man! Why can't I get rid of her? This shouldn't be the case. Oh, oh well, she will never see her children again. A peasant accused of murder is dragged before your court. His wife and children were found butchered in the small hut they called home and he was standing nearby, covered in their blood. Despite this damning evidence, the man continues to profess his innocence. What should be done with him? You know what? Why don't we hang him? Your understanding of all matters pertaining to rulership and administration has increased. We are known as the Lawgiver. That is a very cool name. A very cool name indeed. We're good at, you know, we're at least good at what we do, even though, of course, we hate it and we hate our life in general, but what can you do? Look at that. It would be amazing at warfare. I don't know, I, I feel like I want to go for stewardship here, but also let's just go with Marshall, because we know that the commanders have a lot of sway in the Byzantine court system, and that is the only way how we actually gain access to it, meaning that Strategos Ergica, the lawgiver, will, you know, bring up his son to do exactly that. And speaking of which, I can't change any law. No meaningful law changes anyway. So that's okay. The iconoclast fa uh, faith triumphant. 
The adherents of the Orthodox faith have steadily dwindled to the point where iconoclast believers are the majority. This new state of affairs has reduced the Orthodox faith to the de facto heresy. All former Orthodox holy orders are now iconoclast. Look at that. It turns out that the stranger Theodosia is a nun on her way back to the cloister after several months on the road. As the evening light grows dimmer, you can converse about life and death, faith and doubt. When you excuse yourself to return home, the nun asks if you can offer room and board for a few days. Theodosia? He's a game master. You know what this is going to be, right? Like, we all know what this is. Sure, of course, you shall find rest by my hearth. You, know, you all know what's coming. Yep. For whom the bells toll. More often than not, you retreat to her chambers in the evening, feeling exhausted and weary. Tonight is no exception. Falling asleep is usually easy after a long and taxing day. However, recently sleep seems to elude you. You're sitting in your study, idly moving chess pieces on the board before you, sipping a glass of wine, hoping that it shall give you the rest you seek. Suddenly, someone knocks. Who could it be at this hour? Before you can shout at the intruder to leave you alone, the door opens and Theodosia strides in. Good evening, my lord. I realize that I never introduced myself properly. I am death. And she lost the nun traits, by the way. And I'm here to collect you. A dagger is glinting in her hand. I challenge you to a game of chess, I guess. Go on. Theodosia raises an eyebrow and an amused look on her face. Why not? I have all the time in the world, though you are simply postponing the inevitable, Agika. But you're sure to lose. She settles in the chair opposite your own and places the dagger on the table. Black or white? I will take the black pieces because I think that is actually a higher chance of winning. Black, my lucky color. Well, it matters not. Theodosia see, uh, says with a nonchalant shrug. What is your strategy for the first part of the game? Oh boy, yeah, we can only move on and uh, lose honestly. I will take advantage of any opening, no matter the risk. It has only been a few minutes when you realize just how badly it is going. At first, you thought you were safe, having kept almost all of your pieces, but now you can see how Theodosia has positioned her own. Is it too late to turn this game around? Curse upon those that vile spider. The game is not going well. There's a heavy, cold feeling at the pit of your stomach. You wish you could vomit, but somehow you think that will only please Theodosia further. What is your ne next move? If I distract her, perhaps I can return one of my lost pieces to the board. Sure. You almost cannot believe it, but surely it is so! The plan is successful. The wine spills all over Theodosia's garb as she rubs a cloth on the, a huge red stain, cursing you under her breath. You restore one of your rooks. That was worth getting called a, f uh, a foul boar for sure. Perhaps I can win this after all. Never have you met such a tenacious, unnerving opponent and never have so has so much been at stake. The game is nearing its end and it, it is looking grim indeed. Theodosia is playing with your captured queen, smiling confidently. I could be persuaded to return this to you for the right price. I will never sacrifice my son. This is the only legitimate kid as far as I'm concerned. Everybody else is probably not even mine. No, thank you. I put trust in my skill. Please give me a good move. Dealings with death. During the last few moves, it feels as if time is standing still. Your thoughts are muddled, moving slowly as if through a thick syrup. Random, disjointed thoughts flash through your mind. Places you once visited, old friends you have not seen in years, dreams you came out, uh, gave up on. So many loose ends, and now it might be too late to pick them up again. Checkmate. Your head snaps back up, your eyes locking with Theodosia's. For the first time this evening, you can really see it, and it chills you to your core. The figure before you is not an ordinary woman, not a woman at all. This is death, and she just won. It is time then, Ergika, she sighs contentedly. The endless rest awaits. Please, no, I beg of you, mercy! Just one more year. Now we are Count Alexandros. Let's just hope that we get the title here in a second. First of all, who are we? Skilled tactician, dull, temperate, and ambitious. Ambitious actually is excellent, and I think that he would focus on war, though maybe he would focus on hunting, actually. Hmm, no, you know what, we're gonna go with war here. Hunting doesn't sound ambitious, you know? Let's acquire a title. Please give me my duchy back. Thank you. I have received my duchy yet again. I appreciate that. And I think we're going to go ahead and become exalted among men. We, are want, to, we want to be known as a special man. As a fella that succeeded with everything that he did, if possible. Can I build this up in time? I don't know. But we gotta try, right? You gotta, you have to try to build this stuff up, or otherwise this will never work out. We're gonna go with the light cavalry here. Because that's gonna push us up quite a bit. And then we're also going to build this up. Hmm, what are we gonna build here? Probably just more light infantry, eh? Yeah. 
And I want to thank the members of the channel making videos such as this one possible, naming the Barons, Aaron, Stefan, the Richest T, Snywolf, Emma, Mello, Thomas, Lockland, Mitchell, and of course also the Counts, Shifty X and the Naughty and Wombat, and last but not least, the absolutely beautiful Duke, Suspicious Duck, Nathan, Knight of Squires, Kenneth, Lexo, Roboman, My Dad Left Me at Arby's, and Eric and Aiden. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, and I will see you in the next episode. Later, Alligator.